what's going on everyone? We're back with another inside scoop on what really went wrong between the sketch comedy genius Donnell Rawlings and the stand-up comedy living legend Corey Holcomb. For starters, I know most of you already saw the TMZ footage of the argument, but I urge you all to watch the 5150 show from a few weeks after Cat Williams broke the internet. And watch how Corey told some harsh truths about the comedy living legend Dave Chappelle. Basically, we're going to find out how the legendary Ashy Larry was waiting for the opportunity to get some revenge on Corey for his friend Dave. Let's check out this first clip of Corey explaining why he doesn't really like going out to comedy clubs in Los Angeles because of nonstop cameras in his face. But on a rare occasion of going into the comedy club, he was heckled by a fellow stand-up comedian who knows that it is disrespectful to interrupt the headliner of the night. That's why I don't like walking into a lot of the Hollywood comedy clubs. Because you're on the grid where the people like TMZ and all the other company ran by them people, they basically got access to your whole whatever you do. Yeah, you're set, yeah. Yeah. So I took a chance. I went inside. And naturally, they asked me to go up whenever I pop in. Everybody be so shocked. Damn, Corey came in. Bottom line, the whole ass nigga knew I was going up after him. That hurt his feelings. Because he was headlining the other show. Right. You funny enough to headline them shows to the real boss niggas come in, homie. Nigga like me, they, they be scared to let me go up in the middle of them shows. Because after I get off, then y'all can't pull off what y'all trying to pull off. You know this. But that hurt the whole nigga feeling. Now I don't know about you, but I find this shocking for two reasons. First, it's shocking that Donnell didn't actually use the opportunity to speak his mind and let Corey know how he feels about the jokes and comments about Dave. As a living legend himself, Donnell should realize that his voice in comedy matters just as much as Corey's voice in comedy. The only difference is that Donnell earned his legendary status doing comedy sketches and Corey earned his legendary status doing stand-up comedy in the 5150 show. Regardless of those facts, the second thing I found shocking was that Donnell did this in front of a Los Angeles-based crowd, where he knows that he will be filmed from multiple angles. Why didn't he check Corey behind stage after the show? The only possible reason has to be to hate on Corey's show, being that Corey admitted that he decided at the last minute to come perform inside of the club. This move must have also made Donnell mad, since his opportunity to be the headliner was also taken away from him by Corey. Is this Donnell defending Dave, or is this really just the typical hate on the headliner moment? So, long story short, whole nigga went up there, did his time, plus stayed on longer. Let me tell all you, all you mild ass comedians, it don't matter how long you stay on, soon as you get off, they finna see another level of comedy when I go up. This sound arrogant, but I gotta say what I got to say. So, the whole ass nigga saw the crowd wasn't dead. Cause you know at the end of the night, they be like, oh, they seen too much. No, they ain't seen shit. When I get up there, that's when they see something. So, the whole ass nigga, I didn't even know the nigga was in there. I thought, I thought he left, cause he act like he was leaving out. Yeah. The security guard at the front told me after all of the bullshit happened, that whole ass nigga act like he was leaving. We must use this moment to highlight like, no, how funny that. it is when I'll Corey called Donnell shit. mild in his face at the comedy club. He said that Donnell is like ketchup when the people want hot sauce. Corey is a genius even when he is arguing with a heckler. The worst thing for a heckler is when they become the target and the unexpected starts to happen. They end up being the one who gets embarrassed the most. To top this off, the biggest piece of inside information that the news coverage missed is that Donnell was actually already on his way out of the club when Corey started to perform. But right before exiting, the security guard saw him change his mind and wait for the perfect moment to interrupt Corey's magic. The worst part is that Corey never even mentioned Donnell's name. Hopefully Donnell makes a move to fix things, because once you're on Corey's target board, it's going to be hard to keep the love of the streets on your side. Corey is a true roast master and has the most underrated influence and reach. That's just the word on the streets. So he has some animosity with me. Right. I ain't never did nothing but be respectful to that boy because I'm scared of people that's ugly. <laughs> ugly people never get a fair shot in life. Let's just say that. 
When you ugly, do we got that picture? Can you put that picture up for a second? When you ugly, dog, the world is cold. You could you could be a you could be caked up. You could have a bag, but you still ugly. That's why I'm scared of ugly people, man. That boy looked like one of them kids you donate money to, like 40 cent a week or something like that. Right, right. You know the little boy. <laughs> then he started laughing. He one of them looking motherfuckers. Look. This is when Corey's comedy genius shines the brightest. He always seems to think about the best angle of jokes to take that nobody else has thought of. It's rare to hear men calling other men ugly, especially comedians. But everything about this was funny from the content to the timing and delivery. Before he even mentioned anything specific, my mind jumped to the ashy Larry days when part of Donald's genius was to portray a character that can be classified as ugly. Long story short, the genius about this joke angle from Corey is that it makes sense for when Corey gives Donnell his props for being a great sketch comic and playing a believable character. Plus, he gets to take a joke angle that is rare and full of untapped potential moving forward. This is a picture of self-hate. Uh -huh. He ugly. He didn't want to make a baby with nobody that remotely looked like him. So this is some male order bride looking as Asian woman that he bred with, and she left him right after the baby was out because he ugly. <laughs> ugly people will do something to you or start mess because they ain't got nothing to lose. People who can get bitches at the club, they don't really want to fight. It be the motherfuckers who can't get bitches that's always jumping it off. So I'm just saying, I'm up against an ugly person. It's not fair. They need ugly people security. Whenever somebody ugly come in, they should have to fill out a form different than everybody else. For anyone out there that actually wants to see the picture of Donnell and his ex-wife and son, I advise you to check out that 5150 episode as soon as possible and make sure you subscribe to the channel and stay notified on everything. Corey delivers great jokes like this and better every Tuesday night but I choose to stay away from anything with women and children. We live in a new day when people don't know how to take a joke the same. Once again, this ugly angle is a hit and the wife is an angle that clearly Corey only used to send some quick warning shots. So, the ugly boy came in there, watched my show. On all you people who didn't get the truth, here's the truth right here. On everything I love, the man was watching me do my thing on stage. His jealousy just bust out of him. I didn't say nothing to that man. I don't even, I, when I see that man and I speak to him, I be like, hey brother, how you doing? Even though I always knew he was a whole ass nigga. There's a lot of motherfuckers, Corey, I never liked that nigga and all that shit. I ain't playing that shit, but I got it from the seats. I ain't gonna lie. Everybody listen to this. I want you to fact check this. When I said on stage, if you've been in more than three movies, you probably had a dick in your ass. That nigga said, hey! This is the biggest truth that explains it all now. Donnell was upset that Corey told that Hollywood elite joke about comedians being in more than three movies. This is where the genius of Cat Williams on Club Shay Shay comes into place again. Once Kat told that behind-the-scenes secret about the celebrities having to do some strange things for some opportunities and some change. The people like Corey and Eddie Griffin have been enjoying the chaos and proud that Cat Williams spoke a truth that they have been speaking for many years now. On the flip side, the people like Donnell and all others who have sided with the enemies of Cat Williams are upset and trying to take out their competition anytime possible. I won't be surprised if they all get exposed again for trying to plot on ruining people's career undeservingly. But this is only the start, and the ones who walk and talk with righteousness are destined to shine and thrive in our new world. Even through all of the changes in society. Stay safe and smile daily. As anybody who did that night, when I said, if you done done three or more movies, you probably, I don't know how probably is spelled right now, but probably had a dick in your ass. 
that struck the nerve in that nigga for him to start talking crazy and yelling while I was on stage. So all you people out there who think Corey is the motherfucker who is the aggressor, you wrong. He a whole ass nigga who wanted some attention. Look, he did about an extra 10 minutes and what he was supposed to be talking about. My DVD coming out, y'all. And, 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 and y'all got to support it. And all that stuff to shit. Nigga, I hope this DVD, I, I hope this Netflix shit funny. Garbage ass nigga. I want you to be rich as you could be because you ugly. You need Oprah Winfrey type paper to walk the earth like you want to walk the earth, homie. You ugly. Your neck like this. It's naturally like this. Watch that nigga when he relax. You know, when people relax, they do this. That nigga relax and do this. <laughs> it still be up. It still be up. He look like one of them people from a village somewhere where people put oil pipelines through that shit without asking them. That's what he look like. He ugly. So he wants me to jump and fall for the sucker shit. This is for the youngsters. That man did everything in his power to get me to come out of my body. <laughs> we, live in, we live in Hollywood, dog. Everything is a videotape. You can't come out your body because a nigga invites you to do it no more. When you get with a motherfucker, you gotta get with his ass somewhere else. You dig what I'm saying? Oh yeah. You can't just, you can't just do 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 like back in the day. Boop, ba boop. You can't do that no more. It's a video and you do it, whatever you do. Right. And if you really out here productive, man, you ain't got time to get in people money at the county. You ain't got time to get in people time at the county. Wherever you at, that man tried his best to make me come out my body, but I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. It ain't I'm just worth saying. it. It ain't worth it. Right, it ain't worth it there. <laughs> I said, if we were somewhere outside of Hollywood, you wouldn't be acting like this. And the people wouldn't let you talk as long as you talk. Right. He knew I was going up. That's why he was mad. Y'all act like I'm the motherfucker who walk around disrespecting people. It's people out here know that they are men who mess with men, but they want to act like people hating on them. It's people out here who know that you funny and they want to act like, oh, you said something to him. Corey Holcomb don't say nothing to these people out when I'm in the streets. Are y'all crazy? That man is, that man ugly. That's what all that stemmed from. He ugly. Of course not talented, like I said, he mild as a comedian. Yeah. He the type of nigga you be like, okay, on tours he always opening up. Yeah. 